Hello and welcome to Power Rankings, presented by Energizer. I'm Dan Hansis in the power chair because Connie Fox, Colleen Wolf, a little, under, a little under the weather. But you go to the bullpen and you have a gifted right arm and a gifted mouth and brain of Steve Weiss. So here we are, Steve. Thank you for stepping in. You know, and, and first off, I hope Connie is, is feeling better. Um, and second, are you going to have to go behind my ears and do the inspection just to make sure I've got no uh, you know, residue to scuff up the yes, ball? Yes, you might have some uh, come in and pin, icy and, uh, hot back there to keep you focused on the show, which is one of the weirdest <laughs> baseball things I ever learned for a sport I've watched my whole life. Um, but this is not about baseball. This is about the NFL, yes. our league, and the power rankings, 1 through 32. Uh, they went up on the website on Tuesday morning. People are fired up. Uh, Steve, and before we get into, we're going to kind of break it into four quadrants. Before we get into the first eight teams, I want to say like a more of a broad thing as I'm putting together the power rankings. Who do I trust right now? Who do you trust? Because I, I can name three teams, and we're going to get to some of them. Right. But I have trust issues with the league right now. Are you in the same boat? Yeah, I mean, look, there's a couple teams. And again, those are the three teams that are probably at the top that you feel comfortable with. But then some of the teams... You know, you're looking at their quarterback situations. You know, the Patriots have played their hearts up, but, right, is Bailey Zappi going to be the guy who can do it for a long time? What's going on with the quarterback situation in Miami? I mean, so it's going to be interesting to see, you know, when you when you look at your rankings, how much maybe you factored that into it because a lot of times, you know, when you say, well, this team might have a better record, but if they met head-to-head, -head, mm. this team is better. Well, I kind of like some of, these, some of the ways you looked at it. We're going to have some good conversations, but – the, the trust, mm. I mean, there, there's a certain team we're going to get to that played on Monday night that is just the the, the, the kings of sprinting into a parked car. <laughs> that they just can't get out of their own way. That should be well close put. to close to undefeated, but, you know, continue to go and you know, you, bite that rear bumper. And you have a new uh, title here at the company, NFL Senior Correspondent. What is it's, it? It's, what is it again? Know, it's, it's, it's Chief Reporter. Not yeah, chief, it is. Not Chiefs, not chiefs Reporter. Chief Reporter. <laughs> Very confusing, but yeah. Chief Reporter. So you have responsibility, and you're yeah. the guiding conscience of the newsroom, as I've said many times. <laughs> but now you understand the cross that I bear. So. Oh. I've done, I've done these rankings because, again, sometimes it's like, okay, this team's got a better record, but if these teams met head-to-head, -head, right, you know this the team with the lesser record would smoke them. Yes. So, But, again, the quarterback Man. situation, the injury situation, my God, the 49ers are back, you know, where the, half the team's on IR again. I know. I don't know what to do with them. But, Ugh. all right, I'm here with the chief correspondent, so let's get to number one through eight, right? Yep. Let's start right where we're at the top here. And I put a new team at number one, the Buffalo Bills, followed by the Eagles, Chiefs at three, Niners four, Ravens five, Bucks six, Vikings seven, Packers eight. And yes, I do have trust issues about most of these teams, uh, but I don't have any trust issues about the Bills. So let's start there, Steve. I haven't had a chance to check my mentions yet. Um, it's still early on the West Coast, uh, but I'm sure Eagles fans are not happy. But this is the thing, Steve. I couldn't do it. I couldn't, in good conscience, sit in front of my laptop on Monday and say the Bills aren't the best team in football. I, and, and it's not just because they pants the Steelers. It's because what they've been doing all season long to the Rams in week one, to the Titans in week two, uh, they had the comeback win on the Ravens in week four. Yes, a bump in the road against the Dolphins in weird, hot, humid conditions uh, came down to the, the wire. But then again, the Steelers, they're just the best. They're the best team, so I had to put them at number one. But but here's where I'll, I'll say, you know, to push back a little bit. What, okay. did, what did the Eagles do to make you think that they're not – again, when it comes to style points, when the Bills win, they win. I mean, their defense dominates. Their mm -hmm. offense takes the lead. They look clean. But what did the Eagles do? Okay, they, they had a tough game at Arizona, but they showed that they have, they have shown they can win with a big play, that they can grind it out on the ground, that they can take the ball away. They can come up with defensive stops. Like they have shown, they can win in every style possible. And again, if these two teams met head to head, are you certain that Buffalo gets the dub here? Again, that that's the question. I you can't have to be deal with. certain. But I, if, if you're asking me that question, on a neutral field, yes, I think the Bills are the best team in football right now. And the Eagles, the point you're making is absolutely on point because 
they've done it all. They've won. They've answered the bells in different ways. They've won in a shootout. They've blown a team off the field. They've rallied from multiple scores down. They won a close one on Sunday in a hostile environment in Arizona. So it wasn't easy, Steve. But I, again, the difference between one and two, it's very tight. But I just think the Bills get the edge. I get it, though. What you're saying basically is, Dan, you're an idiot. This is disrespectful. No, I, no, no. I mean, it's, it's not disrespectful. I'm just saying. You say the Bills are Notice the best team. Notice he didn't team. say, no, you're not an idiot, Dan. No, he just said, no, you're not disrespectful. I'll know that. <laughs> no, but just, to t- but just to take away <laughs> just to take away from the Eagles when they did it again and they won in a, in, in a different way this time, again, I get what you're saying. It'd be hard for me to say the Bills aren't the best team, but when I look at the unbeaten record and the team that right now looks like the best team in the NFC – so, I, I, don't, I don't know if I would have demoted them, so to speak. Okay. It would have been a, it would have been a 1A, 1B type. So are you in the camp, and I've been this guy before, but as my power rankings era has moved on, I've shifted a little bit my philosophy. The Eagles should be number one until they lose. Correct. Correct. I until it. they lose. Until they lose. I disagree, but I respect <laughs> it. Um, let's, let's check in with the number three team and the final team I trust. Like wholeheartedly trust. It's the Kansas City Chiefs. They hold at number three, four and one. Um, and I have to say, I can't, I can't say, uh, Steve, that I was totally on board with the Raiders. Don't cover Kelsey strategy at the goal line on Monday Good night. God, isn't it amazing? Like him and Mark <laughs> Andrews, like there's that's just a late coverage, right? They ran a package. It's tough to cover, right? But there was one touchdown, I forget. He ran in front of three guys. It was the fourth one, I think. It the was just like, one. what are we doing here? It He's already like, got you for three. It was like, know where 87 <laughs> is. Know where 87 is. Right? And, and they just couldn't get it. Look, the Kansas, the, the Chiefs are, are absolutely right. Look, they were, they were down 17 nothing. The Raiders came out and popped them. And they and they went here it here it is right here. Like, oh, hey. <laughs> Come on now. Wide open. <laughs> I'm here. But they came back and they played physical. I mean, I thought the, the big plays by Valdez Scantling and Jet McKinnon and, and some of those guys sparked some of the plays, and they got the Raiders on their heels again, and the Raiders had a little doubt. You know, they came back. Um, don't really like Andy Reid going for two when he did it, but yeah. I, I just – the way now that the Chiefs are playing, they diversified their offense. Their defense still has some things to work through, right? But they've played a brutal schedule to this point, given up a lot of points to this point, but – Again, Kelsey got the touchdowns, but when you get Jet McKinnon, Edward Delaire, Judas Smith Schuster, Valdez Scantling, Hardman, they look very, very, very good. Got some issues on the offensive line a little bit, but um, three is a three is a perfect spot for them. You, you're right there with your your, your trust issues are, are 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 good right here, Dan. And they have thank you, and they have Tyreek Hill out the door, and and yet this offense still. Feels like when it starts cooking, where it gets warmed up, it is a freight train rolling downhill, and nobody could deal with. It. That's why, especially in, in the NFL today, Stephen, you've been covering the league for years and years. A seventeen nothing leads, not what it used to no. be, especially against Mahomes and Reed. Well, and that's the thing. Okay, Patrick Mahomes got it going, and it once once they got rolling there, kind of at the end of the of the first half, right? Again, Valdez Scantling has a couple big catches. Mahomes is moving around a little bit. They're like, okay, let's go. So then they go in the halftime. They get the ball, come out of halftime. They come right back down, boom. I mean, Holmes is just that guy. That's why when we came into the season, everybody was like, oh, you know, the Broncos got Russ. The Chargers got all this. You know, and you still had to say to yourself, yeah, but the Chiefs have Patrick Mahomes and they've got Andy Reid. To me, that keeps them on top until the Chargers don't charge her, you know, until Brandon mm-hmm. Staley decides to actually maybe punt oh or – you know, kick it. I love Keenan down. Allen on that, by the way. Oh, my God. From home. Two scoops. What are we doing? <laughs> um, and finally, in the in the, the last spot of the first quadrant, we have the Green Bay Packers, a team that drops four spots. And um, I don't know what it is here, Steve, because on paper, the Packers look like they should have a great defense. And yet, we see it now throughout this season, when they need a big stop, they don't get it, and they're not getting against a third-string quarterback in New, uh, for New England. In your building, you don't get stops. And then this week happens, Saquon Barkley's missing swaths of the second half. You, their Giants are middling offense at best. You can't get a stop there, and this time Aaron Rodgers couldn't bail you out. It's, you know, it, it's amazing when you look at all this defensive talent. You know, Rashawn Gary is just turning into a superstar. 
But the, the, the points you make are, are so valid. I mean, I almost get a stop, Steve. I mean, I, I almost think eight is too high. I mean, I know their record is what it is, but yeah. I don't like some of the mistakes they're, they're making. Um, they To me, they, they still don't have a true offensive footprint. They're, they're counting on 12 to just improvise and make things happen. As you said, he couldn't bail them out this time. Um, but defensively, to some of the mistakes they're making, some of the big play. I mean, they made the Giants wide receivers who have struggled all season long, you know, look like the fun bunch or something. Those guys were out there making plays, and it's like, when was, I mean, Daniel Jones made the Pro Bowl in that game. Right. And, and so it's like, what is going on here? You have talent galore on this defense. How come they are not making plays when they have to make plays? And and this, I don't think this is on Aaron Rodgers in the offense, but also this is a team that's searching where the Chiefs moved right along post Tyree Kill. You know, Rodgers finished 0 for 6 on deep attempts of at least 20 yards in this game uh, on Sunday. Um, they nearly hit one to Dobbs the week before, but they didn't. And they're just – this offense, you do sense that that Adam-sized hole is missing. When they need a big play, they're not able to get it to to stop the momentum building on the other side. That's a part of this too for me. So maybe I do have them a little too high, but that almost speaks more to how the middle of this league is – I mean, it's so hard to figure out who's in the back end of the top ten because nobody's really earned it. So the Packers get some points for me and, and, and some respect points. But you could absolutely make a case they should be further down. Because, because here's my question, and this is where I think the quarterback conundrum factors into your thinking. Like if I'm reading your mind, okay. tell me we're here. I would have the Cowboys there. Okay. I have and, a 10. And, I, and I just don't know if – if you're, you know, is this something where you're just like, hey, Cooper Rush, this is all smoke and mirrors right now with the defense. That, you know, even though they're playing four and one and they're playing exceptional complimentary mm-hmm. football, you just can't do it because it's Cooper Rush and not Aaron Rodgers. Is, am I there with you, Dan? No, you know? you're you're in the ballpark. Look at nine through sixteen now as we move to the second quadrant. I got Cincinnati at nine, coming off the loss at two and three. I guess I just still believe in them. Uh, the Cowboys at 10. Uh, Titans 11 up one spot. Chargers up two spots to 12. The G-Men up six spots to 13. Raiders up one to 14. Rams dipping four to 15. And the Saints up two spots to 16. So, yeah, the Cowboys, I love – I. Mia culpa. I said it this morning on Good Morning Football. I'm not going to hide from it, but nobody else should either. Like, I buried them after week one. I put them in the mid-20s of the power rankings. I said if they get out of five weeks without Dak at two and three, it should be considered a huge win. Uh, and and meanwhile, they've won every game. Um, maybe the reason why they're not higher than 10, why they're not ahead of the Packers, is yes, I think – the defense is carrying a little too much of the weight, and I don't quite see the balance. And if they get punched in the mouth, um, would a Cooper Rush-led offense be able to uh, lift them? I'm not there yet. And I think he got away with some bad throws in week four. Uh, Rush, I think, I threw for about 120 yards in week five. So I think they're vulnerable on offense until Dak returns. But I love the stat that's uh, that they've given up exactly one touchdown in each of the five weeks. Each of the, each of the five games. It's the real deal. And you said it on Around the NFL before the season started, Steve, when we did um, Around the NFC in 48 minutes, exactly that this defense wasn't good. It's great. And that's certainly what's happened here. Well, I mean, look, you know, we talk a lot about Micah Parsons, but here is here is the brilliance of Dan Quinn and what they've done with their personnel in Dallas on defense. Micah Parsons, unicorn, right? Can play inside, outside, can do a right. lot of things with him. Donovan Wilson, a safety, right? He's playing free. He's playing strong. He's playing a spy in the middle. And J. Ron Curse is doing the same thing. So now they've got three queens on a chessboard mm. on their defense. And this is how they're really making it hard for opposing quarterbacks on who to key who to read, and if you're some team with a weakness on their offensive line, it's over. Those guys up front with, with Tank Lawrence and Micah Parsons, you know, so those D tackles, they're really aggressive. So here, here a little question. So you talked about, okay, here's Cooper Rush, 110 yards, 105 yards. Isn't that how Jimmy Garoppolo and the Niners got to the Super Bowl? That's fair. That's fair. I mean – <laughs> you know, when you when I do bury them after the Dak injury, they have to, a lot of ground to make up. So I think they've gone True. from 25 to 10 in four weeks. But you're right. And this is, is, that, is that consolation. <laughs> here's a great test. Here we go. Here we go. Because if they if they go Sunday night against Philly, if they win that game, Ooh. I will be on this show with Colleen next week. 
Um, unless you Wally Pip, Colleen, and it's just a, a Dan and Steve <laughs> joint going forward. And I'll say, man, they should have been at in the top five before that game, but now here they are in the top three. But maybe it's a bit of a, for Dan, a show-me game on Sunday night for the Cowboys that you could take out a big-time and, team. And you will because you know why? After they win that game, they're going to put Dak Prescott in the next week, and you'll be, okay, like everything will be settled for right, you, right? Right, right. <laughs> uh, how about – the Bengals at nine, so I have them ahead. Yeah, now, this is. Uh, you got him ahead of Dallas. I got him dropped Giants. three spots. I kind of liked a lot of what I saw on Sunday night. They get beat by Tucker hitting a fifty-eight yarder and then hitting one at the gun to win it. Um, but there was something with Burrow, who again without T. Higgins, it took away the best parts of their offense and their ability to attack downfield. I just thought it showed that they do have that metal in them to to rise up when it counts, to go on that long drive, uh, to take the lead late. It didn't work out for them, and I and I understand if you're going to come back with me and say this is too generous, but I still believe the Bengals is one of the top teams in the AFC, so I'm not willing to bail at this point. And, and I get that because, you know, I'm bullish on the Bengals too. What disappointed me because they should have won this game if not for – their head coach slash play caller mm. driving all the way downfield with a beautiful mix of power runs, short pass with great catch and runs, getting down close to the goal line, and then all of a sudden playing Candyland with the play call. Oh, okay, let's go <laughs> wide. Let's do this. Let's try this trick play on fourth Candyland, down. Candyland, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, dude, you drove the drove the Tonka, you drove the Tonka dump truck down there. You played power football yep. against this race, and then all of a sudden you get cute. Let's get cute. You know, they should have won that ball game. You know, not saying that that would have been the end all, but that would have put the Ravens in a situation where, okay, I think I think the Bengals go up right there. Um, I, I just – I think they're, they're a football team that's still finding itself and they're still on the come up. I think they need to give us more Joe Mixon. I mean, when he started rolling – this offense finally I mean, that was the first finally. time this happened all year but they they decided to like kind of commit to him even if it was in the short passing right. game and, and to both running backs to P-, P Ryan was fantastic as well continue to mix those guys in there and balance the offense some more it's not just the big shots I, I I think they're a team that again is going to find itself as it goes along you know for the rankings again I, I think both of our projected feeling about this right. team you can look at it and say this is too high again, ahead of ahead of the uh, you know the Cowboys and Giants right now. That you can say, eh. but again, I, I, that's the feeling like if those two teams met head to head, if the Giants played the Bengals head to head, if the Cowboys played the Bengals head to head, you might want to see the Bengals probably have a better team. There's some projection in here as well because um, we haven't seen it yet this year, but. You know, I, I kind of waiting for Jamar Chase to take over games and win games single-handedly the way he was doing in December last year and January. That hasn't happened yet either. So maybe once, you know, Higgins hopefully gets healthy and, and Mixon builds on this, and then you unlock Chase. But I'm a little surprised he is not he's not like a Justin Jefferson type where it doesn't matter what else is going on with the offense. I'm going to get mine. That hasn't been the case with Cincinnati's offense. So yeah, far. But but they have again. I said they have they haven't found their identity. Yeah. I mean, with Justin Jefferson, it is clear the Vikings are going to find ways to scheme him open and do things the same way the Rams scheme open Cooper Cup, right? They're not doing that so much in Cincinnati because they have so many weapons and they're still trying to figure stuff out. I mean, that offensive line is not what we thought it's going to be. Is it a talent issue? Is it a scheme issue? They've got to figure that part out first because, I mean, Burrow's not getting sacked as much. But you saw Lael Collins get, a, get mm-hmm. chewed out by Zach Taylor on that little cute yeah, that was shovel play that you know that they tried to copy from the Chiefs that just did not work. And, oh, and that needs to be burned. Yeah, burn <laughs> the play. <laughs> Toss that one out of the um, you mentioned the Giants, Steve. Do you want to go to the Twilight Zone of the Power Rankings? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. The let's Twilight go. Zone of the Power Rankings uh, it should be sponsored. It's not. Let's work on that. Uh, Sean Kelly behind the glass and get some money in our pockets because the Twilight Zone is the 13th spot. It's the team I don't know what to do with. Okay, they're a team that. You can make a case should be in the top ten. Some could make a case they could be in the back end of the teens. Um, I feel good about having the Giants at four and one at thirteen, but I also, I also understand the doubters out there who might say this is a classic situation where team gets out to a fast start. Check back with me in January when they're seven and ten. You buying in on the Giants or not? I'm buying in on exactly what you said. 
I am still very much of, I love how they're putting it together. You this music? Does it get you into the, the music? The this is almost, I wish somebody would have made the White's theme song <laughs> <laughs> with this beat behind it, a little reggae guitar to it. Don't tempt me. There you go. But, you know, look, the, the one thing I do like about the Jets, Brian Dayball's got them believing, right? You know, you saw that game. Uh, uh, oh, just yeah. Just get one right here. He has got them believing that they're a good football team. You know how the New York media is, though, and it's a national thing, too? They were saying the same stuff about Joe Judge two years ago. Ah. Uh, I know it's different. It it's feels different. different. It's different. It's I just different. want to say that sometimes we get <laughs> but, ahead of our skis a little bit in the in New York, and I'm a New Yorker. But, I mean, look at how they're playing. I mean, they're physical. You're seeing both sides of the ball. You know, they're, they're, they're playing well. I still want to see it for a little bit more. Like... I'm just not there yet. Like, I'm there with the Eagles. I'm okay. there with the Cowboys. We're in lockstep. But it's yes. fair to put them at this spot Look, you, based you, on you, what they've done. You got them a plus six. I mean, are they are they the biggest riser? Yeah. Uh, there's another New York team that has made a big jump this week out of the netherworld. Of the ah, game, as, as they should. As we'll they should. We'll get to that. And one more thing before we take a break here, Steve. I got the Raiders hanging tough. Yeah. One in four. And yet I got them at number 14 because I believe, I believe that they will win. At some point, it just hasn't really happened yet this season. That was a tough one against the Chiefs. The, I mean, the tough one against every team. Right. They, they've been in one possession games every game. I was in a game in Tennessee where the Titans are just crushing them in the first half. They come out and they put it together in the second half. And had they made a two-point conversion at the end of the game, it's going to overtime. But that's their whole season, right? You know, they come down, and we're going to talk so much about the Chris Jones roughing the, the quarterback penalties, the big penalty. No, the big penalty is when um, is it da- Kuntz, Malcolm Kuntz, yes. on the defensive hold on the missed field goal. Uh, how is that a thing? You, how is you that? played the game, Steve. How does that happen? Look, you are coached to move a guy <laughs> yeah. to somebody. I mean, it's never called. So they call it on a missed field goal. Four plays later, the Chiefs go and score a touchdown. And – that's kind of the difference. Oh, yeah, well, Josh McDaniels could have tied it up, um, you know, if he kicks the extra point with, like, one of the best <sighs> kickers me in, crazy too. What are in we modern doing? NFL. Yeah, I, I don't – I, I mean, the fan – so cute with this stuff. Yeah, the, the two-point love. I mean, I get, hey, we got momentum, we got this and that. Hey, you know, the Chiefs are a pretty good team. And, you know, I, I get it. And if that's your play call, Josh Jacobs is rolling, but on a condensed field, I don't know. It's, it's just these things you ra- the Raiders do every week. They are so close, so close, so close, but not close enough. I know. And that, that game specifically was really – and you saw it boil over at the unfortunate incident with Devontae Adams shoving yeah. the cameraman down. But Jacobs comes up, what, six inches short? Right. Maybe closer, yeah, yeah, closer to that. taking the lead with 427 to play. Devontae Adams on that ensuing possession after they get, they get the stop, and good on them for getting the stop – uh, has the ball in field goal range with an automatic kicker ready to go win the game and a little bobble. It was the right call in review, yeah, but right so call. painful. And then a, a bad route where Renfro and Adams collide end the game. It's just like you can't make it up. I don't know if I put it so much on coaching like Zach Taylor. We could talk about Cincinnati, whether right. he's helping or hurting McDaniels. This just seems to be a team that's a little bit snake bit right now, and their schedule softens up. That's so the thing. I'm, I'm, by, I'm holding on the Raiders. Uh, more than buying in or buying out, because I think in a very uh, milk toast AFC right now, they have it in them to make a rise and make me look good or make me look terrible. The next the next six games, they seriously should go five and one, at, you know, if not six and zero. Oh. So they could be right in the mix at the end of that stretch. All right, so we're just uh, we're about halfway through here now on the power rankings. We're going to take a break. And when we return, we dig into the back end, where there are some con- intriguing teams and some. Depressing teams. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. It's time now for Power Moves presented by Energizer. And here we go. The biggest week six jumps. Week six jumps. We got the Jets. My Jets up nine spots uh, to 17. You have the Giants, as we discussed, up six to 13. The Pats up four spots. and Dallas up three spots to number 10. So let's start with my Jets, Steve. You know, we've been working together a long time now, Steve. Uh, as long as I've been here, basically, the Jets have been one of the worst teams in the league. Yes. Like, there's no way to sugarcoat it. There was the Fitz magic year in 15. Even that went sideways at the end. Um, so I try to be objective as possible uh, with with this uh, power rankings exercise. 
am I a little too excited to get the Jets up to 17 based off uh, these three wins in the first no, couple weeks? No, no. They're, they're playing very good football right now. Uh, Zach Wilson's come back. The offense has got a little bit of an identity. The defense is playing well, and Robert Sala has got receipts. Aha, there it is. He's got receipts. But, look, the way this defensive front is starting to play, Dan, again, mm. the, the way the offense is functioning, Brees Hall kind of came into his own a little bit this week. I like the way they're playing. They are believing. We talked about how the Giants are believing. The Jets are believing. And that you look, that is a, that is a very healthy drug, belief. Because talent is, is pretty much equal across the board with most of the teams in the NFL. And now you're starting to understand why you're doing things and what can be the result of doing things. I mean, look at this. I mean that's a beautiful scheme, beautiful execution. He could be a star for his own. Yeah, he could. He yeah, looked he could. like one there. And I... I there is something interesting going on here with this draft class, and w- there was a lot of hype and talk about it when it happened that Joe Douglas had leveraged all these draft assets into potential immediate impact guys, and that's what's happening here. I, I love this quote. Sauce Gardner has immediately stepped up. And He's been that guy. A big-time cornerback, uh, and Garrett Wilson is a hit-the-ground-running playmaker at wide receiver. And, and then you have Brees Hall, who they moved up to grab in the second round, and... I love this quote. Um, At some point during Sunday's game against the Dolphins, Hall, Gardner, and Wilson looked at each other and laughed. This is from uh, the Associated Press. Uh, We were just talking about it during the game like, bro, we're so good. And what that is, that's a team that's starting to believe in itself. Yeah. And you could say, and I know Dolphins fans will say it, but we were playing our third-string quarterback. Tron Armstead went out. uh, We were on the road in a bad situation. And that's all true. But that, that is independent from a Jets team that knows nothing but losing for years, having these new guys. Like, I remember at the draft in Vegas interviewing Sauce Gardner, uh, you know, 20 minutes after he was selected. And it was like, as the Jets guy, it was like, oh, you know, the Jets have had a lot of losing. He's like, I don't care about that because that had nothing to do with me or any of the guys that are coming in. And you feel that now, that these guys, they're not tied to the losing like the fans are. They're young and hungry and Maybe even Youngry, Raheem Morris style. Well, and, and keep in mind, Robert Sala and Mike LaFleur, LaFleur, the offensive coordinator, they came from a Niners team that went through this when they started with the Niners back in the day when Shanahan took over. The Niners were terrible. They were coming off that great Jim Tom Sula, Chip Kelly run, right? Mm. And so they were horrible. They didn't have the personnel. It took some years to build the personnel. It took some years to develop that talent. and got it took some years for those guys to believe. I mean, the Jets might even be ahead of the curve. In terms of that belief factor. So you have these young guys who are playing the good in the quarterback situation. It's still going to continue to get better. we still got to see more from Zach Wilson. But he looks like the real guy. And so if they nail that, that solves a lot of their problems. I mean, they haven't had a playoff quarterback really since Mark Sanchez. Yeah. And and so. I mean, if, if Wilson turns out to be a player, look out. Correct. Look out. Correct. I'm and, getting and, too excited, Steve. And, 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 and I also think that Lafleur and Sala are starting to kind of figure out who they are as coaches as well. So to see this learning curve, Dan, receipts. And CBS guess what? Length. We talked about the Packers, who are number eight in the power rankings, but can't seem to get a stop on defense. The Jets go to Lambeau in Week Five, and if the Packers aren't ready, that offense is going to score points. Yeah. And it's going to be an interesting situation. Uh, in Green Bay. Let's Ooh, move. That wouldn't be good up there. No, let's move. Uh, check out the rest of 17 through 24. We talked about the Jets. Let's talk about the, uh, here it is, Jets 17, Dolphins 18, down eight spots. Uh, they got all sorts of issues at quarterback, and that explains that situation. Cardinals 19, down two. Browns, Patriots, Falcons, Broncos, Seattle, uh, round out uh, 20 through 24. So, Let's talk the Browns a little bit here, Steve, because they're... <laughs> That's a frustrating team, man. I mean, the Raiders, they, they have the top spot in terms of uh, this this season is annoying at 1-4, and four, playing all these close games. That, but the Browns, Ugh. and you hate to say this because this is also annoying, oh, they could be 5-0. and oh. But, Steve, they could be 5-0, and oh, and yet here they are at 2-3 and three and in the middle of the pack. Last week, the Ravens lost, you know, when they blew it. Their defensive issues are just, they're, they're just now, it's, it's no longer... A blip. I mean, you you come up here. It's a tire fire. You play you play the worst rushing team in the NFL, and they hit you for almost three hundred on the ground. What is that? I don't know. I mean, you play in a division that is a rushing division for the most part, right? And the you Ravens had Garrett run the ball. and Clowney back. You expect better results, but it's not happening. Getting gashed, and then you know this is after you know you're letting all these balls go over your head. 
um, for poor communication on the back end. They are a frustrating team offensively. They are playing good football. I mean, Jacoby Brissett had, had the pick, right? He had the he had the he had the bad late pick, but they're playing good football. They're, that's a team, like you said, <laughs> you just want to bang your head. But you know, probably in their big picture of things, they're staying afloat just enough. This is kind of the pattern. They got to get back on the plus side in the win loss column. So when Deshaun Watson comes back in week eleven, mm-hmm. um, is week eleven or week twelve? I'm sorry, when we uh, come I back, believe it's I think twelve well, against the Texans. Texans whenever right? Got the Texans. Whenever he comes back that they will be in position to possibly make a run. And the division continues to set itself up for him to possibly come in and make that Right, difference. or even just get in the door of the playoffs. And, and then if Watson uh, can build, uh, no matter your opinion of that situation, he's going to make that team a lot better. Joe Woods is the defensive coordinator over there. I would keep your head in a swivel, Joe, because yeah, if they need to make a change to jumpstart the team, it might be at D.C. Yeah. Um, all right, let's move on. Let's talk about. The Broncos. Let's talk about Island Games, Steve. Let's talk about the Broncos. Let's talk about Island Games and maybe a a blind spot, you could call it, maybe, for the power rankings for me. When a team really either stinks out the joint in primetime or delivers a dominating performance in primetime, I am susceptible to a little extra drop or a little extra jump. It's just who I am. I like football under the lights when when everyone's watching. and the Broncos is playing one of the worst primetime games on offense that you'll ever see on Thursday against the Colts. I'm just out right now. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm right. No, you're right. And look, the only reason, and, I, and I'm looking at your list, I think the only reason why they're not lower is just because the teams behind them are just, like, almost non-competitive for the most part. I mean, there's some teams there that you can give some, some hope to. But th- they're a mess right now. I mean, we can sit here and say, oh, you know, they're, they're, they're taking some time to get the offense together. No, they are... You know, now they've got their best offensive lineman gear. Bowles is out for the season. Russ just can't seem to figure out what's going on offensively. Maybe it's just him and Nathaniel Hackett not getting it together. But just some things that you're hearing. I mean, you know, Russ having his own office in the building like he's a coach and spending time there with his entourage as opposed Mm. to some of these younger guys in a locker room who he was supposed to be building all this chemistry with. Like some of the stuff like that, that's not healthy. It is not healthy. Um and there's new ownership there. I mean, I'm sure there are some assistant coaches and some people in that building whose heads are on a swivel like this could go south real quick for all of us in here. Right up to the big chair. Hackett, they didn't hire Hackett. They didn't hire Hackett. Yeah. It, could go, it could go right up to him. They're not getting rid of Russ because they're too committed no. to him financially. But And that just skews the power dynamic any more, even more potentially because Hackett's a smart guy. He didn't get to this job by accident. He knows he needs to make things work with Russ. Uh, to keep him happy because Russ isn't going anywhere. But so far it has not worked out. And then there's the not-so-small issue, uh, Steve, that after that game on Friday morning, he's getting an injection uh, near his shoulder, uh, Russell Wilson. So he's not physically right either on top of everything else. It's just a lot of bad vibes right now. There's a lot of bad mojo. There's a lot of bad mojo with the Chiefs playing the way that they're playing. Um, It's going to be tough to catch up. They're just lucky that the AFC West – isn't as dynamic as we thought it was going to be. Yeah. Twenty-five through thirty-two. We got the Jags down five spots to twenty-five. That's annoying. Let's get to that in a second. Uh, Lions down two spots. That's annoying. Yes. Let's also hit that. Uh, Steelers hold at twenty-seven. Colts, despite the win, I wasn't buying in at all. They hold at twenty-eight. Uh, Bears up one to 29. They're, Justin Fields doing something finally there. Uh, Commanders down one to 30. They're a tough watch. The Texans get out of the cellar for the first time in a couple weeks uh, by getting into the win column. And the Panthers drop uh, to the final spot. And we're going to get to their situation in a second. But let's start with the Jags, Steve. Uh, they were the team in the beginning of the season when we, uh, Connie and I were talking about, oh, who's the Bengals this year? Because infamously, um, I had Cincinnati about 29 or so at the beginning of last season. They end up playing at SoFi in February. Who could be the team that shocks people and makes a run into the playoffs? I said the Jags. It's all there. And yet, and I don't want to make this a total referendum on the quarterback, they're not making that leap, especially in the last two weeks. And Lawrence does have a lot to do with it. Yeah, I mean, he's turning the ball over. And, you know, they've, they've got to figure that I'm I'm not completely out on them. Because they've got a ton of talent, but he is making some bad mistakes. Some defenses are finding some things 
some tendencies um, and, and, and making him second guess, double clutch a little bit. But the Jags, I mean, look at that. Look at the division. I mean, the Titans are starting to, you know, find a little traction, but they still have an opportunity. Trevor Lawrence has got to settle down. He, he's got to kind of, Doug Peterson's got to get him to settle down a little bit, uh, to trust his players a little bit like he was doing earlier in the season because defensively they're going to be able to do some things. You have them in the right spot. I mean, they've earned that, that number 25 power ranking, but, you know, they're, they're going to be better as the season goes along, but these last two weeks they have just – They've looked like the Jaguars that we're used to seeing. Do you, I mean, entering the league, did you see Lawrence as that type of guy who could be a star? And has anything changed for you based on what we've seen in a year and a quarter? No, I mean, last year is a redshirt year. Right. You can't, I, I absolutely thought he was going to be a star. I still think he's going to be a star. People I talk to, coaches think he's going to be a star. He's just going through it right now. Right. Doug Peterson will get him right. Okay, that D.C. they have down there will get that defense right. Mike Caldwell. So, again, this is just kind of the growing pains he's having to go through this is his rookie year so to speak so I still think he's going to be really good I think the Jaguars are going to end up a lot higher on this list by the end of the season and then there's the Lions right behind him at 26 and that this is just kind of a bummer because I think we all want the Lions to be fun we all want to look forward to a a cool Thanksgiving game for instance Uh, that would be nice between two quality teams and yet it's not there. They had the best offense in the league statistically through the first four weeks. Then they go up to New England and get it's, shut out. Shut out, get taken apart. So then, and you take that out of it, and you know their defense has all sorts of issues. God, you have to be concerned about this team. You have to be concerned. I mean, because now, you know, ownership will probably be patient with Dan Campbell, but now is usually when that, that, that ownership group up there starts looking at other candidates outside, you know, the building. Because mm. they're just not putting it together. Now, this was, let's just say this is the aberration game. And they get it back. That's fine. Still defensively, they are a hot mess um, on what they're doing. And they got players on defense. I mean, that's what's got to be frustrating. They have got some talented players on defense. They've got to figure out what the heck they're doing right there. And I love Aaron Glenn. I think he's he's a guy you saw in Hard Knocks. He's a great no, communicator. Aubrey Pleasant, their secondary you know, coach, is a great coach. That coaching staff, you, they're easy to root for. And yet you understand that there are questions behind the scenes right now. Like, why isn't this working? Why aren't we taking the leap that we all expected? Uh, grit and grit alone does not get the job no. done, unfortunately. And and Campbell said uh, after the game on Sunday, to me, this is about as bad as it gets. I believe we hit rock bottom. So now the only place to go is back up. Okay. That's the curse. Be careful I, that, there. <laughs> that's a curse, Dan, because the one thing I have found in life, and especially <laughs> in the business that we do, right. it can always get worse, man. Absolutely. That it was the same thought I had. It's like, be careful there, Dan. <laughs> yeah, not- it is week five. <laughs> uh, finally, uh, let's talk about the number 32 team, which cool. usually we kind of steer uh, clear of because there are all sorts of issues, and certainly that is the case with the Panthers right now, but they were in the news this week because they fired Matt Rule, and 11 and 27 in two plus seasons, they owe him 40 million bucks. Some of that is offset when he, when inevitably he's coaching some Big 12 team and they're a right. top 12 team in uh, next fall. But whatever rules future, we don't have to worry about him. But the Panthers' future, you should worry about because what are they? Where are they right now as an organization in your mind? This is bad because they couldn't fix their quarter. Right? They tried all the band aid quarterback options. They traded away picks to get Sam Darnold. That didn't work. So now, are they in a situation where they just finish out the season, get the number one pick, and go quarterback? I think that's the route everyone's probably hoping they take. Right. Let's just tear this whole thing down. At the trade deadline, let's fire sale some players. You've got a good young defensive nucleus. If you got to get rid of Christian McCaffrey, maybe you trade him to a contender. You hear some of those reports out there. Yeah, what Buffalo was calling about it. So we'll 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 see. I think they'll wait and try and get see if there's some leverage play there, but. I've just covered too many teams where this has happened, right? And so now all the assistant coaches are calling their agents mm. like, all right, you know, hey, we're going to play this out. We're going to be professionals. we got to have a good face to the locker room. Um, but we're gone. Steve Wilkes, a wonderful human being, is going to take over. He's going to coach his heart out. But we know they're, he, they're not going to give him a shot. You know, interim coaches just don't get held over. Right. Um, and so I think this is going to be bad. And here's something that, you know, really hasn't been mentioned that with this firing has to be taken into account. You don't think David Tepper, the owner of the Carolina Panthers, is looking at what's happening in Atlanta and saying, we have more talent than the Falcons, and they're in every game. Mm -hmm. That coaching staff is coaching those guys up. They are making those guys 
They're putting them in position to almost win. And we're getting smoked week after week. We can't figure it out. I think that had a little something to do with it as well, you know, including the part, part that his team just seemed to really just kind of lay down at the end of that Niners game. Yeah, and he, he said that. Uh, he came out and said there was – not not enough uh, competitiveness on the field, and there were too many too much too, too much red in the crowd. Uh, referring yeah. uh, to to the 49ers fans, so yeah, they're going through it right now. Uh, but maybe uh, brighter days are ahead. Uh, <laughs> Better be Steve. You've said it all. Thank Lo- you so love much. Love the list. Good job. Thank you, buddy. Well uh, done, man. Thank you for jumping in. Colleen will be back with me next week. Uh, make sure you check out the Power Rankings NFL.com slash Power Rankings, and. Uh, Watch around the NFL. Yeah, watch around the NFL. And listen to it. There's the plug. And check out Steve on NFL Now and all the great stuff he does as well. Until next week, heed the call. (laughs) 